And this is my assessment of what that dollar dual carriageway means. Yeah. Number one, mm -hmm. we need to understand that in every contract, there are two sides. Mm -hmm. And particularly this one, there's a public, being government of mm -hmm. the Republic of Zambia. And there's a private mm -hmm. partner being the Macro Ocean Investment Consortium. Mm -hmm. Which, and I want you to quote this, which includes NAPSA and Workers' Compensation Fund as part of the Macro Ocean Investment Consortium. Why? It's because NAPSA and Workers' Compensation are the financiers of this deal. So they are part and parcel of the Macro Ocean Investment by virtue of being the financiers of this deal. Now, NAPSA and Workers' Compensation are government entities. Mm -hmm. Okay, They are government entities. Meaning that in case there is a conflict, there is failure, for instance, on the part of Macro Oceans to deliver the road to the expectations as prescribed in the contract specifications. Mm -hmm government will not be able to hold macro oceans to task because if they for instance take macro oceans to court government will essentially be taking itself to court because napsa and workers compensation which are the financiers of this deal are government so meaning that government cannot sue itself that's a serious anomaly and it raises very serious uh, questions about how government will ensure that macro oceans deliver the contract to its specifications Number two, if you read the statement of the Minister mm -hmm. of, uh, of Infrastructure, Honorable Milupi, mm -hmm. in clause 10 of his statement, the Minister states that the contract was awarded okay, at an exorbitant price of 1.2 billion US dollars. And this is in comparison with the contract sum of 649,966,167 dollars. The minister says it was awarded at 1.2 billion by the previous regime and that they have reduced it to 649 million. Can the minister confirm what has necessitated this reduction? Is it because the scope of the work has also been reduced? Because the minister cannot argue today that they have reduced the price by half and they want to save money if the scope is still the same. Because actually the cost of doing that road now has doubled if you look at the exchange rate and if you look at the cost of all materials if you look at the cost of transport the cost of machinery the cost of cement the cost of asphalt the cost of all materials that are needed to build that road the prices of all these materials have gone up so when he says that the contract sum has been reduced from 1.2 billion to 647 649 billion can the minister also be honest enough to tell the zambian people that they have also reduced the scope of the work. They have reduced the scope of work and can they tell us what they have removed? Yeah. Can they give the Zambian people the BOQs of the so-called $1.2 billion and the BOQs of the so-called 649 so we can do, compare and contrast? If the minister claims that there was corruption when the price was paid at $1.2 billion because the scope, according to him, remains the same, then why has the contract been given to the same contractor who had paid it at 1.2 billion? Why give it to the same contractor if at all the price of 1.2 billion was exorbitant, looking at the scope of the work? Why have you awarded the contract to the same contractor who in the first place, according to your own submission, wanted to steal over $600 million from the Zambian people? Number three, the minister in a statement, if you read clause 42, this is what the minister said, and I want to quote. Besides that NAPSA are not the only ones likely to be approached for possible investment in the project, they are just part of the possible funders. Now, listen to this again, and I quote, this is the minister's uh, his statement, go to clause 42. He says, NAPSA are not the only ones likely to be approached for possible investment. Meaning that NAPSA has not agreed. There's no contract yet. Right. There's no agreement yet. Because the minister himself in his own way says, 
Nafsa are not the ones who are likely to be approached for a possible uh, investment in the project. So can the minister tell the Zambian people the truth? Have they signed the contract with Napsa, or they have not yet signed the contract with Napsa? Because clause 42 of his own statement says that uh, Napsa might not be the only one they will approach, and that Napsa might possibly be one of the funders. Now, this shows that Napsa has not yet committed to funding this project. In the absence of a conclusive arrangement, what criteria was used to pick the questionnaire? Right. Okay? Mm. And how then did government proceed to sign a contract with the questionnaire before concluding the funding arrangement and funding agreements with Napsa? These questions must be explained to the Zambian people. Right. I went further. No, mm. I'm talking about what the minister said in mm. parliament. And the Zambian people must know. And this is where you can see that we're dealing with government of dealers. Okay? And here is where mm. the deal comes in. If you go to clause 49 of the deal, by UPND, we are guided, this is what the minister says. We are guided by the total revenue over the concession period by, by the government share of total gross revenue of $432 million. And using an average of 10%, as stated in clause 48 of the minister's own statement, that is about, it ranges from 1.5% to 15%, the, conce the conce concessionaire mm. will collect a total of 4.3 billion US dollars. The concessionaire we will collect 4.321 billion US dollars. Now, do the simple mathematics. After the deduction of this envisioned accrual to government, this is what, how the breakdown will be. 1.1 billion will be repayment of the loan and financiers of approximately, financiers will get 1 billion. Okay, including interest rates. Huh? Mm. We are being very fair. We are even including maintenance. We are including interest rates and same everything. And I'll go back slowly so that we're on the same page. So the money after the project is done is expected to be done in three years. Yeah. And they're expected to collect the toll fees for the next 22 years. The concessionaire will get 4.3 billion US dollars. If you do the refining, the, the refinancing or paying back of the debt to NAPSA, it will, with the interest rates, it will come to 1.1 billion dollars. Okay? Mm. Let's add the maintenance. The maintenance work, you can put it at 1 billion US dollars. And the future maintenance costs approximately maybe 300 million will have, we will leave the gross revenue accrued to the concessionaire a total of 1.8 billion. So, concessionaire Akachosamo and Ramazonse I pass our government 1.1 billion repayment of the loans to the financiers. I pass 1 billion approximated interest rates. I pass 300 million dollars approximated maintenance rate. The questionnaire uh, concessionaire will walk away with 1.8 billion US dollars. You know what this represent? Mm. 289% profit. That is the money that the Chinese who have been given this contract to make. 1.8 billion US dollars representing 289% of the total investment. Now, let's ask ourselves questions. Does first of all this make sense? That we can use our own money, workers' compensation money, our own money, NAPSA money, give it to macro oceans, Macro Oceans build the road. After three years, they walk away with a profit of 1.8 billion US dollars from the trophies. It doesn't make sense. So what is motivating the government mm. to go on this deal? The normal decent thing to do for government was simple. NAPSA is not a bank. It's not a lending institution. Mm -hmm. All the projects NAPSA has done are very clear. They will finance and own. If you go to Kwachazanga, they have a complex. They financed it and they own it. Mm -hmm. If you go to Levy Park, they finance and they own. 
If you go to Zambia National Building Society, they finance and they own. That's how they get their money. Why didn't we say NAPSA finance the project? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pay for the cost of building the road and then recover your money using trophies. So that the 1.8 billion US dollars that is going to go out of this country could have gone back to NAPSA. What is the motivation then? The motivation is simple. They are using this deal. So while we are fighting each other over a, a cooperative, Banzano, by UPND, by 1.8 billion, and lastly, I laughed. If you go to close 35, mm -hmm. In the minister's statement, the minister emphasized that there was no requirement for a sovereign guarantee. Money sourced locally is a guarantee enough, my minister. My minister wants us to believe that these are geniuses. We are dealing with smart guys. They went and negotiated. There's nothing to negotiate in terms of a sovereign guarantee. Because NAPSA money is public money, is government money. It is a sovereign guarantee on its own. So this whole project, first of all, from the financial point of view, doesn't make sense.